Hello everyone! In this tutorial we will look at how to get started with the Lisa S Nano Quadcopter. We will go to the Paparazzi Wiki and select the Lisa S Nano Quadcopter tutorial. We will be working with the Lisa S Quadcopter including battery, the USB RF dongle and the Blackmagic probe to which we connect a JTAG serial wire debug cable and the adapter. I will assume you already have Paparazzi installed, so I will directly go to step 5. In case you haven't, watch the tutorials on how to install Paparazzi. In order to flash the SuperBit USB RF radio dongle, you will have to clone the SuperBit RF firmware repository from GitHub. On GitHub, the source code looks as follows. Copy the command open the terminal and clone it to a directory of your choice. I am currently in the home directory. The next step, according to the wiki, is to move to the SuperBitRF directory. The following step will initialize the libopencm 3 submodule. Copy-paste this command in the terminal. Next, download and update its content. We are now ready to make the code. To flash this code onto the USB RF, insert it into your computer while holding the button on the top. This will make the orange and red LEDs go on and off alternatively. Then run make flash. I added sudo in front of the command, as only the root user has the right to upload through USB on my computer. Notice the message that says all operations complete as soon as uploading is finished. We now move to the Lisa S quadcopter. In order to flash this module you have to install Paparazzi. If you already have Paparazzi installed you can simply move to the Paparazzi directory. Check that you are in master branch and then run the program. This will open the Paparazzi Center. Select the Ladybird example airframe from the list. This will automatically load the Ladybird Lisa S airframe file and the right settings. As a target, set Autopilot, press Clean and Build. Next, select the Blackmagic Probe Serial Wire Debug Flash Mode. Now unplug all USB devices and make sure you insert the Blackmagic Probe in your computer as the first USB device. Insert the 4-pin header Serial Wire Debug header on the Lisa S with adapter facing away from the Lisa S. The LEDs will start blinking alternatively. Press the upload button and check that the LEDs stop blinking and, the own and that only the green power LED remains turned on. Once the upload is complete, the LEDs start blinking again. Now that we have flashed everything properly, we can start binding all devices with the transmitter. We start with the USB RF. Press the button on top and the orange LED near the button lights up. Then press the bind button on the transmitter and the orange LED should turn off while the orange LED at the bottom will light up. Now we bind the Lisa S. We will power the Lisa S again while holding the button on top. The orange LED on the most outside should start blinking slowly. 
Look carefully, as it may not be that bright. Now press the binding button on your transmitter. You will need to do this a couple of times if it doesn't work immediately. Once the orange LED starts blinking faster and finally remains turned on, you have successfully bind it. Now execute the, the flight USB serial at the baud rate of 57600. The data link program will fail during execution. This is normal. In the data link program, you need to change the USB serial port to an ACM port. In case the only USB device that you have plugged in is the USB RF dongle, this port will be ACM0. To check how many ACM ports are in use, go to the terminal and move to your dev directory. Look at the list of TTI ACM ports. In this case, I only have one TTI ACM port with the number 0. Another method is to unplug the USB dongle and reinsert it. The name of the last device that you plugged in can be visualized by using the display message command in the terminal. After checking this, I will start the data link program again. In the ground control station, you will see that you start receiving telemetry and you will see that the link is green. You can see which message you are sending and receiving by opening the messages program. Before flying a new drone, you always have to calibrate its sensors. The only sensor which really needs a calibration is the magnetometer. To calibrate the sensor, you need to go outside, in a place far away from magnetic fields. In the Paparazzi Center, go to Settings, Telemetry and change the telemetry to Raw Sensors. Plot the X, Y and Z axes of the magnetometer in the real-time plotter. Stop and redo the server to generate a log file specifically for these measurements. Start rotating the drone around all axes equally. It may take some time before you have collected enough measurements. I will feed forward through my measurements as it would take too long to show it in real time. When you have collected enough measurements, stop the server. Open the IMU calibration page on the Paparazzi wiki and copy the command which runs the Python script which will generate the calibration values. Copy this command until logs. You will fill in the name of the log file later on. Open the terminal to paste the command. Now open the Paparazzi folder and move to the var directory. Open the list containing the latest log files. Select the latest log file which contains the .data extension. Paste the name in the command window. Add minus vp to visualize the graphs. If the points in the graphs are well distributed on a sphere, with hardly any outliers, you can copy-paste the calibration values in your airframe file. I will open the airframe file from the Paparazzi Center and go to the Magneto Calibration section. Save the airframe file. Before flying, make sure you have uploaded the new version of the airframe file to the drone. The magnetometer is also subject to the magnetic field created by the current flowing through the wires. Therefore, we will do a current calibration as well. Open the ground control station and go to Settings, 
modules and start the send IMU magneto module. Now open the messages program to see whether you are receiving the IMU magneto current calibration message. Stop and redo the server to get a log file specifically for these measurements. You need to switch to RC Direct mode such that the autopilot will not influence the control of the throttle. I will do this by going to Settings, System and setting RC Direct as Auto 2 mode. To make this mode active I have to use the mode switch on the transmitter. Unkill the drone and turn the throttle to full power while holding the drone firmly against the ground. Then bring the throttle back to idle and turn off the engines. Stop the server and go to the IMU calibration page again to copy the command which will run the script to find the calibration values. Copy-paste the values in the airframe file. Before flying, make sure you have uploaded the new version of the airframe file to the drone. Now we will check whether the barometer sensor is working properly. Go to System and change the telemetry to raw sensors. Open the messages program and the real-time plotter. Plot the barrel raw message. The values shown are approximately 1013 hectopascal. This corresponds to the current weather conditions indicating that the value is correct. Now we will move the drone up and down to see the changes in pressure. The pressure will decrease when you lift the drone upwards and increase when you set the drone on the ground. Your drone is now ready for an autonomous flight. Check how to prepare for an autonomous flight in the following link. This is what my autonomous flight looked like. Thank you for watching.